His work has been featured on KPFK 90.7 FM Los Angeles. Romero's poetry deals with identity, family, social issues, social justice issues, and the intermix of suburban and Latin, Latino Latina culture. He has been praised by Gabriela Fresquez, co-host of the nationally syndicated TV program Latination. La David A. Romero is a passionate truth seeker who represents the Latino community with pride and a refreshing sense of humor. To find out more about David and his work, visit www.davidaromero.com. Um, please give him a big round of applause. Un poquito. I will grow as paranoid as any gringo or gabacho over Spanish spoken. The Spanish I can't understand. Se la vi. L'homme est condamné de être libre. Excusez-moi, pardon my French. Some things just can't be translated. Un femme est un femme. A woman is a woman and a man is a man. But the words of a foreign language aren't just words. They are images, thoughts feelings. Pardon my insecurity. In high school, I took French instead of Spanish. Got A's in my classes, wanting to French my French teacher. Ooh la la. Je ne sais pas. I should have known. I should have learned the language I was born to speak. Like a mute refusing to sign or a blind person who had never rested their fingertips across Braille, my tongue never became familiar with the words, with the sounds. Instead, I learned French. Oui, je parle français. I speak French, the language of love, a dead tongue, a language that nobody speaks, a, l a love of a place, la France Paris, l'architecture, l'art, Albert Camus, Pepe Le Pew, and Jean-Paul Sartre. But when I close my eyes, Edith Pia fills my ears, oil paints the color of rose, gray rivers, sepia skies, weathered people qui mange du pain et bois du vin par la sun, toasting to the red wine of life. Mademoiselle, vous êtes trop belle pour les mots je voudrais dire, pour les mots je voudrais écrire, comme la mer, comme les montagnes, comme les étoiles, Vous êtes, mais les ananana ne parlent pas. Pineapples don't speak. In Paris, well, it doesn't exist. Well, not for me. Pardon my cowardice. In high school, I took French because all of the stupid people were taking Spanish. And I wanted to be different. Like the brutally colonized of Algeria, so eloquently speaking French, Spanish seemed the ass side of a Latin coin never to turn up. And I wanted to get ahead. Pardon my cowardice, but you were here last year. Don't you remember? Someone was speaking a language, but it wasn't just a language. Someone else was speaking it, and it was a secret. Escúchela y comprende. Es la palabra verdad. Es la lengua del pueblo. This poet spits in Spanish to cover up the fact that he doesn't have anything interesting to say in any language. Es la palabra verdad. Es la lengua del pueblo. Es la lengua de la machica. Hold your tongue. Do not think to criticize me for speaking English when you too so proudly speak the language of your European rapists, murderers, and conquerors Spanish. Now tell me who's brainwashed, whitewashed, no hablo espanol, fuck off. Come back to me when your tongue can hold words in the ancient language of the Mexica, Nahua. Oh shit. This poet does spit in Nawa. Now what? Keeping it realer than real, more authentic than authentic, looks like we're at a Mexican standoff. Well, there may be 50 ways of saying snow in Inuit, but all of them describe the same substance, meaning there are truths that can be described in any language. Make me more Mexican. A simple statement, a declaration, a cry for help. I heard they were performing the procedure somewhere in a dilapidated warehouse in Tijuana. It involves infusions of chile, gargling mole, consuming peyote-infused chiclets, classes on how to sell oranges, be priests, 
architects and presidents, cops and convicts, sinners and saints. It involves baptisms and dirty sinks filled with salvation and jaritos, splashes of tapatio, baptizing your tongue para la lengua to spit fiery words, puto, puta, chingón, chinga madre. These words are whole and holy, spoken in backyards and barbecues, weddings and quinceañeras. Yo no hablo espanol. Un poquito. Make me more Mexican, indigenous, and genuine. Halo my head and smoke trails of sage. Take me to sit at the feet of the pyramids. So that these visions of me as sore thumbed, pink skinned, sunburnt, loincloth Indian praying to the four winds won't seem so shallow and ridiculous. Yo, no. I dedicate this to the temple of football with an entrance shaped like a goal post. Raiders in Dodgers jerseys, Cholos and Chalitas, Rebels and Rockers, Borders and Bullets, Spanish and Resistance. This is what makes a Mexican. Dear Cal Williams, you are not welcome in my home, nor in the homes of the millions of Mexicans and Latinos you despise for the national pride. You will find reflections of green, white, and red in the family restaurants of Italians. Find reflections of green, white, and orange in pubs owned by the American Irish. You are not welcomed by those blacks, whites, and Asians who would stand with us. We all have a right to be here, a right to celebrate where we come from. So may this letter find its way into your mailbox, decorated red, white, and blue, adorned with a leering eagle. You would claw out our eyes, rip out our tongues. You have forgotten that the eagle who adorns the flag of my people is well used to killing snakes. And your tongue has been found slithering. If I saw you backstage, I would cut out your heart, expose it, rusty copper colored and yellow. As you bellowed, we were slaves, bitch. Y'all just a bunch of gardeners. Taking off your hat, exposing bite marks from a swim with a great white nation. I've heard of biting the hand that feeds, but you, Cat Williams, have been feeding the hand that bites for far too long. You tell us to go home. This is our home. Some people call our children anchor babies, then anchors away. We're here to stay. You were found chanting U.S.A. U.S.A. in the same state that outlawed the celebration of the birthday of M.L.K. M.L.K. You have clearly chosen your targets wisely. Far too easy when you sniff power from Jan Brewer's navel. Keep warm and tense with Sheriff Joe Arpaio. Suck the truth from Bill O'Reilly's lips. Take it rough and uncut from Glenn Beck. Cat Williams, even a pimp in parody, becomes a prostitute when he performs in Phoenix, Arizona, where our dreams go to die. We act now to burn this city down and piss on its ashes so your bullshit will never rise again. Thank you. So my name is David A. Romero. I am a professional spoken word artist. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna drink some water because yeah. that was three poems in a row. I just like the, you know, fucking, you know. <laughs> you know so. Uh, yeah, so I have the grand fortune of being able to travel around and uh, hit up colleges and do the... It's not the greatest of lives. Uh, there's no insurance plan, uh, lots of gas mileage. I have to beg my girlfriend to uh, drive me places because I have two DUIs. So kids, let this be a lesson to you. Party it up. Party it, party it up tonight. Shit, go crazy. Don't drive. <laughs> you throw those keys somewhere else. You learn from my example. Community service, possible jail time, all those fees, not good things. You should avoid that. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, so this all kind of got started. Oh, yeah, yeah, partying. So when I used to go out partying a lot, like I would party it up here at Occidental College, and I'd, I'd get drunk, and I'd, like, I don't want to freestyle battle people. Like, I was really into underground hip-hop. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to challenge you to a battle like, uh, 
Uh, what's your name over here? <laughs>